I've been wanting to watch for years again The Karate Kid. I wanted to watch it because in my mind it was like a summer movie because they're at the beach at one point and um, you know he's out there sweaty doing the uh, sanding um, the thing and um, and then I started it and literally the first frame says September and I was like oh I guess it's a fall movie and then I remembered that it, uh, <laughs> that he goes to that Halloween dance and like oh obviously this is this is a fall movie you never know. It was made in 1984. Does it hold up? Is there things that's like, ooh, shouldn't have said that? Uh, or is it, um, you know, the effects are bad? Or, wow, the story has changed <laughs> in the last 30 years-ish? Um, and um, anyway, so it's the perfect movie. It's the perfect movie. It's so unbelievably good. You should watch it again. I was like 30 minutes in and I was like, this is so good. I'm going to write down everything that's good about it. And maybe I'll make a blog about it to make it feel nicer. Um, but long shots, I love long shots, meaning there's no cuts. So it's just the camera. It's kind of like a play in that way. It's this, the scene is from one point of view and they're both you know, in it for a long time, and they have to do one continuous good take. So that makes it harder, which I respect more. And it's just cool. I feel like you're, you don't get, um, you don't have to suspend, dis yeah, suspend your disbelief as much because you're looking at it like you would be a person, not like, <laughs> um, like you're, at a tennis match watching two people talk. Oh, really? Oh, really? Um, I hope I stayed in frame. Um, <laughs> so, the, the longest shot was, you know, spoiler alerts if, if you haven't watched it yet. Um, which, by the way, spoiler alerts suck. I hate spoiler alerts. No, I hate spoilers. Spoiler alerts are fine. They're very helpful, actually. But, um, People say, oh, it was made in 1984, you get to, it's been out 30 years, you should see it. But kids, though, Sixth Sense was spoiled for me before I was, like, old enough to even watch it. So in that way, spoilers suck. And there's no time limit on that, because I was watching Friends, maybe I shouldn't have been watching Friends this young, but in, like, whatever grade... And, and then I watched Sixth Sense, and, and I already knew what the thing was. I already knew the whole thing. And that's really loud. I hope it's not too distracting. I'm sure it is. <laughs> but this is real. This is real life. You know, the flimsy up the numbers people would be like, oh, that's not happening. Oh, just focus on me. I'm going to ignore it. But you know me, do it, I keep it raw and real. Anyway, so, so, spoiler alerts. I think, I think they're all pretty mild. They're real mild. I think actually this is the most, uh, spoiler alerty thing. So after the skeleton fight, the fight where, um, Johnny and his gang or whatever, the Cobra Kaiers, as I call them, which I've never had before, but now I do. Uh, the Cobra Kaiers. The fight where he ran away from them at the dance that I talked about, the Halloween dance, and he gets beat up, and then Mr. Miyagi uh, helps him, like, give some tea and stuff. That scene is f 42 minutes in, and 42 minutes and eight seconds. I'm not flimmerzying up the numbers, you know me. Two forty-seven and 26 seconds so that's five full minutes and it's not four in some minutes it's over five minutes not flimsy enough the numbers if anything 
Um, I don't know. I'm stealing up the numbers. It's so tight, it's steel. There's no flimsiness. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Wow, so, so David Spade. Um, <laughs> so over five minutes, one take, which is just doesn't happen a lot. And then the foreground and background, meaning there's something happening right in front of you, and then in the distance, something else is happening that's contributing to the story. Um, and it's not necessarily 100% needed to know in the background. I'm like, I don't, I've never heard of this director before, um, but I'm gonna look him up now, because I don't think I did for some reason. But he really killed it. The director and cinematographer. Um, they're my new favorite duo. Daniel son <laughs> and his mom were talking in a restaurant and then they're in f in front of a window and then across the street there's a little thing that happens to cover tires I think I said um, <laughs> they they were having a little thing and it was something that you didn't have to hear you could understand just by looking those little details man is what makes me fall in love with something or someone and so connections and flow is another thing that I love that they did so this kind of goes goes into the last thing I said um, so what I mean by that is there was the fight um, his mom and uh, him have a fight in front of Mr. Miyagi's door before they start working together um, <clears throat> And it's kind of the impetus to why Mr. Miyagi um, reaches out to Daniel. Um, and I think today they would have made it even more subtle, maybe. That was a little on the nose, which I didn't mind, especially for a 1984 movie. But um, I'm just kind of wondering what they would do probably more subtly. They're probably, because they, it had blue doors, blue, I don't know, they're French or something, French doors? Uh, I'm not really great with that stuff, but uh, they're unique looking doors, so I recognized them, um, and I was like, oh, that's in front of Mr. Miyagi's thing, that's cool, I wonder if they'll, like, obviously that's on purpose, but I wonder, I wonder if how they'll, because I haven't seen it in, like I said, years, so if I see something more than two years ago, I don't remember most of it. I remember the big plot points, like I said, they're at the beach, they're doing the, you know, <laughs> um, and then he's getting sweaty doing all the stuff, but that's, I mean, you know, I, I knew a lot, but, um, but like those little things, especially, I haven't seen it since I learned about how movies are made and stuff, so that's a big, that's really fun, actually, when, when you learn about um, how movies are made and stuff, and then you rewatch stuff, and you're like, wow, this is actually way better than I actually even knew. But I already loved it. Which is weird because you can make a movie for like the populace and the people that really, really know and you know are, are in in the inside baseball of <laughs> of. Uh, of movies. I wonder if they would have had like a little symbol on on his door to make that more under like for people to be like, oh, that's the that's the Mr. Miyagi door, right? Uh, and and I, I think that's maybe how they would have did it. And then he wouldn't have came out at the end because it's too on the nose. Just how I would do it, baby. Hire me to do the <laughs> the remake, the re remake. And. Oh, and then so as they talk about when Mr. Miyagi and Daniel become close after that, because of that, that fight in front of his door, um, Mr. Miyagi's kind of trying to convince Daniel to go to the dance, and he's like, ah, you know, I don't even know what I'd wear. And then uh, the, the ingredients, <laughs> where the costume is behind him and I remember catching that when I was a kid and like oh 
mom, like, look, like, it's right behind him. That's crazy. And that's beautiful, man. And then, this is no spoilers at all. Great acting. Great acting. I, man, it was great. It could, like, selling this movie could be silly. Like, oh, this kid from New Jersey goes to California, and then he has a hard time fitting in, and then, <laughs> and then he does karate and beats up kids. The same kids that bullied him. Like, that could be really corny and stupid. But they... It's like real emotion. And the long shots help with that to convey that because you know how the, the, the acting is consistent because sometimes um, through cutting, the, it's a different take, obviously, possibly. And so they might not have the same exact energy and then you could feel that and you're like, oh man, that's, that's, they did that months later in reshoots or something. Um, which is, I think that's self-explanatory. I don't like when people say stuff and expect people to know what it means. But if, uh, if you needed to redo something for whatever reason, um, you watch the movie and then realize, oh, we need to add this to it or we didn't get this right, something happened, either a tech issue where it looks bad or whatever. Um, so they redo everything and get that shot or scene. So that's what a reshoot is. Um, and so since, they're, since it's long shots, they, could, they feel more real because they are more real. They're, they're, it's happening in real time. I really felt it in them when they were fighting. Like in one of the, in the first scene, one of the first scenes at the beach party, um, no spoilers, but it really felt like they're feeling this. And uh, great writing. It's not overwritten, which especially back then, I think now is when people are you know, I'm biased because I know I've only lived now. But from what I could tell, it was cool to overwrite stuff and be like really smart with it. It's cooler that because people are more, people know more about everything, movie making, and and they get writing more, even if they didn't go to film school. It's not overwritten, which kind of is in, in um, implicit with uh, Mr. Miyagi, because I guess he doesn't know a lot of English, so they can't make him overwrite stuff. They can't overwrite him saying stuff because he doesn't have a... It's like L with Stranger Things. <laughs> Cutting in with a cultural... Uh, current reference so like I said Daniel was getting bullied and one of the like not main guys like one of the outside guys uh, he was walking with a girl and and the guy yells it must be take a worm for a walk week <laughs> they like it it's that is so insane that someone wrote that and then multiple people had to say, yes, that's good. Keep that. And then the actor was like, yeah, this is what it is. And then said it like this. Like it was a big, nice, juicy one. <laughs> it must be take a worm for a walk week. That is so beautiful. I'm using that from now on. I'm using it as a compliment. I'm using it as an insult. I'm just gonna say it as much as I can. That's that's a hidden gem there in uh, in Karate Kid for you. Um, and oh, another thing that they did great with writing was um, they 
him and this girl had a great date, so dare I say perfect, and you know, it's a montage, they're laughing, and music's going, they're putt-putting together. At the end of it, some, some small thing kind of left a bad taste in the mouth, and that's so, I think that's so real. And because in movies sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, gravy. I think it was their first, like, official date. So then you're, like, wondering, like, do they still like me? Was that too bad of a taste in their mouth? Are they going to call me back? Especially back then, they didn't have texting. So um, it's terrible. But uh, terrible in that you're, like, overthinking stuff. Um, so I really like that. That was really smart of them. And the only thing I didn't like about pretty much anything about it was that <clears throat> Allie, the girl, um, is cold to him uh, at one point late in the movie um, after, this is a spoiler, so do another 20 seconds-ish um, ahead. Uh, Allie's cold to him after he sees her kiss someone else. I don't get how that makes sense. I don't think they say that he finds out that she punches him after that because it, that little moment was taken out of context. The Johnny guy kind of sexually assaulted her. I guess that's one of the things. It's like, eh, 1984. But um, I guess that happens in movies now, too. Um, but uh, trigger warning. Um, but yeah, she she gets kissed against her will by his her ex and then he sees just that part and then runs away and then she punches him but he doesn't see that and then he is she's kind of being cold to him and then he's trying to get her back like all nice like as far as he knows he got cheated on I think so what the heck and then her friend explains what happened and then he's like oh I'm sorry I don't know, that didn't feel, that, even when I was a kid, I remember like, why is she, what's, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's my, my only thing, and I cried maybe five times, like a lot, and I think twice during the end of this, the last scene, like the last sequence, but it's objectively a good movie, it's just so good. I want to know, what's a classic movie? that you've recently seen and does it deserve its classic status? So one of the ones I saw kind of recently, it's been like a year probably, but um, Rear Window uh, by Hitchcock. The synopsis doesn't sound interesting. It's a guy just looking out of his rear, rear window, but it's really good. Um, and so I think it does deserve classic status. So what's what's a classic movie that you've watched recently and does it deserve its classic status? Thank you. God bless. <laughs>